What's up, pickle peeps? Today we're talking about an email diary. Now, what the hell is that? An email diary is where you keep all the stored information about your emails that you send out, maybe their content, the results of those emails, all in one place so it's easily referenceable. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Melissa, why do I need that information? Because, you know, I can just go into my Clavio or my MailChimp or my Aweber or my Constant Contact or wherever you are sending emails from. And that's a great question. There's a really simple answer for that. The platform you're using today might not be the platform you're using in three months, six months, next year. And if you ever go to change platforms, which is not a bad thing, changing platforms can be a great thing, be a really smart thing to do. If you go to change platforms, you need to, or it's really nice, I should say, to have all of that information that you can carry with you instead of losing it when you stop paying for the platform, right? So I'm going to start saying, don't get married to a platform. For everyone, like, it almost makes my eye twitch whenever I hear people who are like, oh, I'm a Clavio person, I'm a MailChimp person, I'm a, like, whatever, it's like, these platforms are not part of your identity, and this goes for all tech and all platforms everywhere on the internet, it, this goes for all of it, it's not part of your identity, okay? Whatever platform you are using, you're using because it fits something for you right now. Maybe it fits your budget. Maybe it fits your needs for right now. Maybe it's you know someone else who uses it so they could help you set it up. That's a really valid reason to use the software, right? <laughs> so it fits what you need right now. But if you want to stay on leading edges of things, then you have to be aware that the golden child tech, the golden child platform will not always be so. This is the case that I'm dealing with right now. A couple of years ago, I switched over to Clavio. Why? Because it was the best uh, autoresponder for e -com. This is the best email platform for e -com, and it arguably still is. However, things that I have been hearing, especially from like Perry Belcher, I'm part of the Ignite Mastermind, is that the traditional ways of using email perhaps are not working as well as they used to. And perhaps you've seen something like the rise of the newsletter going on. I have friends who are like, oh, the newsletter bubble's gonna pop. It's like, no, I don't think so. Because how people wanna receive information from email and stuff is changing right now. So for my case and what I'm testing in my business, Clavio is now not the best email service for me. I am switching over to Beehive and we will see what happens with that. Is Beehive built for e-com? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it will integrate with Shopify and it will do a couple of the key things that Clavio does that I'm utilizing. So I'm not going to be losing out too much. But this does mean that all of the data, all of the, the open rates, the clear rates, like being able to look back and see what worked and what didn't within Clavio is disappearing as soon as I stop paying for it. Right, right. So, and the same thing happened when I changed from MailChimp over to Clavio, and I think MailChimp is where I started. I was on MailChimp for a long time. Uh, but all of that data disappears. And fun fact, like once you close your account out with somebody, sometimes if you go into those old emails that you sent with them, uh, your pictures might be gone. Why? Because you closed it down, so they're not saving the URL of your picture anymore. So your graphics anymore. And so if even if you go back to reference your old stuff that's sitting in your inbox, like it should be, then you might have issues. So what should we do? How do you prepare for keeping your tech, your information safe, um, independent of platform, right? Because you always want to be in the best platform for what you need to, to do. That's why I'm switching to Beehive. Uh, so we're going to talk about ways to track your emails. Thing number one with tracking your emails here, you ready? Is make sure you're getting them. Like I just mentioned one of my old MailChimp emails, I can still go and reference, I'll get the text, <laughs> but that's not the only thing that works in those emails. But still, make sure you are getting them so you know what your emails look like. Number two, track your results, okay? Build your own tracker or email diary. Um, or get one from somebody else. Now you can do this on paper if you want, even though I think that'd be like exceptionally tedious, but some people are notebook people for notes. I'm a notebook person, but not for data. Uh, or you can do something in like a Google Sheet or an Airtable or any of that. I'm gonna show you in a second what the Airtable that I'm looking at, I'm using looks like. Am I in love with it? No, but it's pretty good. And as I figure out what kind of stuff I wanna track, it'll just get better. So let me show you what I am using. I got this one from Coach Andrew George, who is uh, my partner over in labs. 
and he built this. And there's a whole bunch of empty space because I added things. And then there's other things that he has in here that I don't track, so <laughs> we're good. Um, but this one right here, we're looking at, it has space for the subject line. I included this part right here, is, is it for um, my split testing during that email? I have to figure out how to stack these or do a text wrap so they're not like just so spread out and annoying. Um, Am I doing a split test? Because if I'm doing a split test, I probably want to know what the results of the split test were. Um, in reality, if I was doing a split test, I would like, if I was building this, if I was techy enough to build the spreadsheet myself, I would have it where if I checked yes, it would drop down and I could put in uh, test A and test B and like really narrow those in and then it would collab them, but whatever. Um, so then I have information for the winner, which I decided as I was copying information over, I wasn't going to include. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. The preview link, I'm not actually sure what that means. The subject line score, subjectline.com. So this is when you're really good and you're on top of your shit. Maybe you're getting things done ahead of time. All things you know, Melissa doesn't do very well. Um, you would put your subject line through something, a score like this, and it would tell you how good it is. And Typically, the better your subjectline.com score, the better your email chance your email has to be open because the number one job of that subject line is not to sell your shit, it's to get people to open your email. And then the number one job of your email is not to sell your shit, it's to get people to click the button. <laughs> <laughs> to click the button to wherever you want them to go. And then once they've clicked that button, now it's the job of whatever page it's on to sell the thing. Hope you know that. Okay, so that's, that's important. <laughs> Uh, then it has over here your pre-header, that's the secondary text that's in there. You have like your subject line text and then pre-header text. You can see I'm not that great about including pre-headers. Maybe that has an effect, you know? Um, and then Andrew asks for in here your email focus. So is it a sale? As I was going through these, I was like, wow, I send nothing but sales and buy my shit emails. Hmm, that's an issue. That will be changed because I'm switching to Beehive and like every, a lot of things in my business are switching. So that'll be cool. Your call to action, so like what's on the button or what's your link text over in there? How many emails sent out? When did you send them? What time did you send them? That could be interesting too. Then how many emails were received? So from what you sent, what actually made it to inboxes? How many bounced? How many unsubs? Number of opens? And then you would get like your open rate. That one did shitty, didn't it? I don't have any of the really good ones in here. <laughs> um, your number of clicks and your click through rate, all of that good stuff. So like this one did awesome, right? Right? So that's an example right here. And as you can see, I am in the middle, well, no, I'm officially, I got stuff moved over to Beehive, but I'm going through like trying to clean up analytics and Clavio. So I have some of that data and it's coming to the point of like, do I want that data? Do I, how badly do I need that data? Because I got to tell you, without having double screens, it is a pain in the Pataki to move the data from Clavio, where it's all over the place, uh, into this tracker right here. So my final tip for creating an email diary is going to be kind of like taxes, you know, like sales and expenses. If you keep on top of those reports, then tax time comes, end of the year comes, it's easy peasy, right? these peas lemon squeezy. Um, whereas if you don't <laughs> keep those records and stay on top of them throughout the year, then when January comes, you can, like I've done the past few years, spend an entire week locked in the studio, crunching numbers, looking for receipts, looking through email inbox. It's just like, it's just hell. <laughs> so this stuff works a lot better. Any tracking thing that you have to manually enter works a lot better when you do it every time you send. Or I would pick like maybe one day a week where you go in and you take 15 minutes, if, if it even takes 15 minutes, to get all the data and move it over. This also doesn't have on here a section for sales. I would like to see that added in, but like if you, any of the places you go, like you can get it, um, you can add other tabs if you want. But I would like to see like, did I make money from this email? Clavio like gives attribution. So Besides using UTMs and like really crazy link things that I just don't want to be bothered to do, and that could make me a really lazy marketer and business owner, I don't know. But for most of these things, I just go in and want to like, I sent the email, was it open? Was it clicked? Did I make money? 
there we go. And if that's, if that was the purpose for that email, and I would love to go in and color code this to be like, what's the purpose of the email? Is it a sales email? Is it a relationship email? Is it an awareness email? Is it a teaser email? Because there are plenty of types of emails you can send even in e-com that don't have to do with the sale. They could be prepping the way for the sale, which I'm learning a whole bunch about that in the book I'm currently reading, which is called Oversubscribed. I'm probably going to do a review of that book or pieces of that book uh, over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, so email diaries. I know I went off course at the end there, but excellent, excellent thing to track. Okay. <laughs> track in here, making your email diary. I would actually have different tabs for like tracking every week to see like how your list grows or shrinks, any of that. This was like having to type in to see how many bounce, be like, oh, why haven't I gone in and looked at those guys? Or why, um, who unsubbed, like how many unsubs am I getting? Like, looking at those things, then having another tab, I would think, where you could see, like, how your email list is performing, like, is it growing, are you getting more people on it, all that stuff, I think that would be absolutely fantastic, um, so yeah, make sure you're getting your emails, create a system to store the data independent of whatever platform you're using, and then stay on top of it like taxes to stay on top of it. So I hope this helps you out. If anyone is interested in Mr. Andrew George's template, I'll have it linked down below for you. No, I don't make any money on that. And happy emailing. Now it comes to the decision time. Do I go through and put two years worth of emails in this thing or do I just call it quits and move along and be good going into Beehive and tracking my emails and everything that's happening now with them? I don't know, but maybe vote below. I'm probably leaning towards the, the, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna clean slate it here. Let's just clean slate. Okay, that's it. Take care people, bye.